And now, Louis L'Amour. Men wanted gold, so went where the gold was supposed to be. They wandered along the canyons, climbed the rocky slopes, camped in grassy meadows beside mountain streams. Because gold is never found in easy country. They tried a few test bands where there was a likely spot, and sometimes they found color. That did not mean they had discovered anything. Gold flakes can be carried miles and miles from where they originated. I knew one mine in Arizona where the gold was found buried deep in the earth, but was in a number of large boulders of material different from any around where they were discovered. Very rich ore was found in those huge buried boulders, but nobody ever found where they came from. The earth moves. Earthquakes, slides, volcanic action, and tectonic plate movement can shift rock formations at amazing distance. There are rock formations in Africa, for example, that are continued in Brazil. The great land bodies have moved, and they have butted against one another and pushed up mountains just like you can push up the folds in a carpet. A good example of the Allegheny Appalachian mountain chains. A series of parallel ridges pushed up the crushing together of continents in bygone ages. So they say gold is where you find it, but also where you lose it. Wherever there are gold mines, there are stories of lost mines. You may wonder how one can lose a mine, but it's easy. A tourist can drive along the highway from Durango to Silverton, and he can pull up beside the road and look out over what has been called the Lime Creek Burn, because of a great forest fire that swept those rocky slopes 100 years ago. It's a vast sweep of magnificent country, and out there, or in the mountains just beyond it, are several lost mines. It takes two kinds of men to develop a mining country, the men who find the mines and the men who develop them, and they are rarely the same. The prospector, the discoverer, is not often equipped with the money and the business ability to open up and develop a mine. Many of them have been sold out for what seems nothing, yet it was to them a great deal, and had they persisted in operating their mines, they might have lost everything. Some men only want what they could take out. They kept discoveries a secret, going back again and again to take out what they needed, and when they died by disease, accident, or gunplay, the mine's location was lost. From that highway you can look off toward the West Needles and the Twilight Peaks, and over there somewhere is Carson's lost mine. Many men saw the ore. Many men tried to get him drunk so he would talk. They failed. Many tried to follow him and failed. A couple he turned back with his Winchester, but gold he had, and rich gold too. Gold ore is not all alike. It comes in many varieties and not always the same color, but miners and rock hounds learn to recognize it. Show a good rock man a piece of ore, and there's a good chance he will know where it came from. But mines are lost, and some of them are never found. I know how easy it is because I lost one myself. I know where it is within a few miles, and I was not the first to find it. I have not been back to look, but have flown over it. A nightmare of country if you're looking for something. A magnificent country if you like scenery. But if you want to hike it, you'd better be young, strong, and used to high, high altitudes. From the ridge on my ranch, I can look across at a bunch of mountains where there were a dozen lost mines, at least two of them somewhere within range of my vision. Find them? It isn't easy. It's a big, big country, and prospect is a slow, painstaking operation. Since prospectors gave up the burrow for the jeep, fewer mines are found. Jeeps can't go into the roughest country, and many of the best mines are found in places where no man in his right mind would want to go. Trap of Gold deals with the story of a man who found gold, and what he had to do to get it, when every minute of working was a minute when he might be killed. <laughs> 